When I was a young boy, my dad decided to get me into archery. So he bought the target and he put all these bales of hay and we got the bow and arrow. And I remember the, the first Dangerous. day I was trying to hit that target. Yeah, I just couldn't hit it. And finally, I was able to hone in. You know, it's, it's that way in our Christian life. Sin is missing the mark, missing the target that God's uh, set out there. And guys, we've all broken uh, one of God's laws and we've sinned. But before we sin, we're tempted. And then after we sin, we have guilt. And we're going to talk about all of that on this edition of Finish Strong. I'm Dan Wheeler. Terry Steen is in the house. Brian Rowland is in the house. Well, our virtual house. And uh, John Matarazzo, our producer, is in the house. Uh, but guys, hey, it's, hey, it's a Dan. good... Yes. That reminded me, remember the one day we went down to the baseball field in college, <laughs> yeah. we got bow and arrows, we went into oh, the Lord. infield, we yeah. shot them straight up in the air, <laughs> and then we kind of looked at each other like, it's what did we us. just do? And we're sitting there, not moving, and, and we're going, Shoo. <laughs> all the arrows i mean we could have killed ourselves and then we thought it was cool we started playing a game we'd shoot them up and you have to run we we did some strange things back and that's then. how no life doubt. is isn't it yeah, yeah. It is. It strange is. yeah yeah brian have you ever missed the mark in archery or otherwise <laughs> <laughs> no, but I will tell you that. Um, no, you've never missed them. Uh, no, no, guys, no, I never, never we, missed we them. We found the sinless. Per- <laughs> yeah. No, this. Um, we lived in a corner, and um, and it was a dead end street. So I had a basketball net in my drive, and my buddy Mike Enright had a basketball net in his drive, and so okay. we played full court basketball back and forth. Oh, really? Well, That's cool. We were always breaking out the windows in his dad's garage. So oh, his yeah. dad put this chicken wire over all the windows, and Mike says, he "Gives me a baseball," and he goes, "Throw it up there as hard as you can." And I go, no, it'll break the window. He goes, my dad guarantees it won't break. I really? threw it as hard as I could right through the chicken wire, right through the window. <laughs> George comes out and he goes, I did say that. I did say that. <laughs> so much for the guarantee. Well, you know, in life, we can't guarantee that we could even go a day without sinning. It, we, But our goal is to get better and to live a more righteous life. And, you know, it starts uh, early in life. And when you go back and trace it in history, Terry, it actually started in the Garden of Eden. That's where sin first happened. It did. And that's where the temptation started. And obviously the devil knows our nature. He is here on earth. He knows. And it was so interesting that what he did, he just lured Eve in and then Eve lured Adam in, and it was interesting that he distorted God's words. What God said, he distorted to Adam and Eve, and they believed it. And isn't that interesting that that's what's happening today, that God's words being distorted? And so we're seeing a culture, and, and we're seeing our own churches that are functioning in a distorted sense because they're not following God's truth. Yeah, I mean, Satan's whole approach was to lie to Adam and Eve. And we see so much lying. I mean, Brian, you know, with politicians, it's like, what do you believe anymore? And even watching the news, who's telling the truth? Right. It's truth. And I think that's what's happening in this day, especially because it's it's more like, who's there's there's somebody that's in Congress right now. He lied throughout his whole campaign, but nothing's being done about it. I mean, that's what happens now. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Terry, we know that sin is missing the mark, but sin carried out to the full effect results in death, ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. It talks about that in James 1. And, you know, it's disobeying God, it's breaking his laws. And so Satan knows that. So he's just like that. He uses that temptation just like a battering ram, and he keeps hammering away and hammering hammering away, and we keep trying to fight it. And all he has to do is break through just enough to get that little opening, and then that's when he starts working his way in. And that's something we have to work so hard to fight, isn't it? Yeah. Boy, it really is, yeah. I think the one thing we got to realize, too, and that people don't, is that temptation is not sin. You know, it's, it's like Dan put it before. It's a fork in the road. It's uh, you got to make a decision. If you stand here too long, uh, you're going to get hit by something. <laughs> it's going to take yeah. you out. But yeah. over in 1 Corinthians 10, 12 through 13, it says, 
So if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. There you are in the fork in the road. No, uh, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can hear, what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. I think that's a very important part right there to understand that God will make a way to escape. He'll make a way for you to to flee temptation. There, there'll be an opening to get out of there. And it's your choice. So you have to make that that turn and run away from it, run from your temptation. And we have to be looking for that way. And if we're not, then we're just, you know, willfully disobeying God. And the thing you got to remember, too, is that you get past that, it's never going to go. You're never going to outgrow it. Temptation's always going to be there because that's what Satan's all about. I mean, he's he's there to tempt you. He's there to lure you away. He's there to take you away from from your kingdom, uh, Christ's kingdom, and living with him for eternity. And when you look at what, I'm sorry, Terry, go ahead. I was just going to say, and also, you know, the more mature we get, the more advanced he gets in trying to tempt us and to attack us. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we make, make it past, when we don't sin, when we win in the temptation, we have to be careful not to start getting prideful and think we've got this figured out because that's when a big fall can happen. Absolutely. You're right. Yeah. 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 You know, giving into temptation can and will kill you. That's what we need to understand. Spiritually, it, it happened in the Garden of Eden, right? What happened after they sinned? They were kicked out of the garden. They were separated yeah. from God's physical presence. Right. He was still there and available to them, but they couldn't be in his presence. And sin will keep you from God's presence. And it will yeah. also keep you out of the Bible. The Bible mm-hmm. will keep you from sinning, but sin keeps you. And that's from the Bible. true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we've got to be so careful. I mean, you mentioned maturing, Terry, and I know we're still working on that <laughs> all these years later. <laughs> really <laughs> working on it. <laughs> but really, you get to the point where you realize you have to stop, stop sin right at that temptation point. Because as Brian said, it's not a sin to be tempted. We sin when we give in, and Satan's right. not going to give up on us. Right. Yeah. He's going to keep yeah. battering. I like what you said, Terry. He, it is like a, a battering ram. Mm-hmm. And then the result of sin, of course, is guilt. Now, we're all born with a conscience. And I, and I always heard that you know your conscience is kind of like if you do something wrong, it hurts. It hurts you inside. Like there's almost... A ball inside your head. And there's little, you know, prickers on the end, and every time you sin, it moves. And but if you keep sinning, after a while, they kind of wear away, and you're not as conscious of your sin. Would you guys think that's a, a good analogy? Yeah, I've heard it mm-hmm. as a cube. There's a cube in your head. It's got the sharp corners, and so each time the conscience you sin, and the, con- and the that corner hits you, and it hurts. But then you keep doing another one and it hits you. And every time that corner hits, it's starting to curve that yeah. corner. It's not so sharp anymore. It starts mm-hmm. to get duller and duller. And then before you know it, it doesn't hurt. You don't yeah. notice it. And you're on that slippery slope. I use the analogy of sandpaper. Don't you keep using sandpaper? Mm. And the more you use it, the more you use it, the more you use it. You just wear it mm. right away and there's nothing there. And yeah. That's the same thing. You, yeah, you have yeah. no effect. So, so Terry, it starts with the temptation. How do we win that battle? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can't do better than following Jesus' example, can mm-hmm. you? And so that's always the first one we go to in Matthew, the fourth chapter, where he fought the devil with Scripture. Every mm-hmm. time the devil came at him, he had a Scripture to come against him. And it was interesting to me that this was right before his ministry began. It was like he was needing to go through this test to demonstrate his love for Christ. And that's something that I think for us, we're never going to get away from temptation. It's going to happen, but we have to learn to fight it, and we fight it with Scripture. And as we win, we reflect our love for Christ every time we win. And that, mm. to me, that's kind of a neat picture. Yeah. And it's kind of like in in sports, you know, when you start to have that success, you gain that victory, then you want to win. Mm -hmm. And and we need to want to win in our spiritual life as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, Christ went on to teach the disciples, though, too, about temptation. And in the Lord's Prayer, he goes and says in Matthew 6, 13, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So we are to ask God to deliver us, to keep us from the evil one. He's going to be there. He's going to attack. But we have, when we ask Christ to help us, to put that barrier up so we can knock off those fiery darts, we will have that uh, because we'll have our our shield of faith up there. But he also says then in um, Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray so that you will not uh, fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And how true is that? And we can say, yeah, 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 nothing's going to get me. And next thing you know, you're going, oh, my gosh, I'm right back into this again. So it's it's, uh, watch and pray. Keep in constant prayer. You know, it's interesting that we keep pounding prayer. We keep pounding using God's word. It's so foundational to Christianity, but everything leads back to it, doesn't it? Yeah, Mm -hmm. it sure does. So we've talked about, you know, temptation. We've talked about sin. The result of sin is guilt, separation from God. And now we're we're talking about overcoming. And uh, God's word, we got to watch and pray. But then, Terry, there's something else we need to do uh, to resist and submit. Yeah, exactly. And I thought you were going to cover that one. Am I covering that one? Oh, I had that I was doing three and you were doing, okay, I, I am covering that one. We now, flip- I, just wanted, I just wanted you to know what I was going to talk about. Okay, you ready? <laughs> so <laughs> James 4, 7 says, submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So, after, you know, we use God's word, we watch and pray, but submitting to God, I think, is something we've got to do every day. And at the start yeah. of the day and say, God, I'm, I'm submitting you, you know, to you today. And like Brian said, he taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation. You know, don't let me even go near it. That, that, so then we don't have to be in that struggle. Let's just not even go there first. Um, resist the devil and he will fr- flee from you. But I think the key to resisting is that submitting because that, that strengthens us right away. Yeah, that's exactly right. If you don't submit first, it'll be too tough for us to resist, won't it? And and mm-hmm. then to take it another level, because the Bible talks further uh, about fleeing. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're capable of resisting and the devil leaves you. But there are three specific things that the Bible talked about where it specifically says, hey, don't even mess with it. Get out of there and flee. <clears throat> and one of them is adultery. And th- and that's uh, talked about in 1 Corinthians 10. And adultery is basically anything that becomes be- that comes between you and God. If there's something that comes between you and God or is tempting attempting to, you flee. Mm-hmm. You leave that behind because we shouldn't have anything come between us and God. The second one is found in 2 Timothy, and that's flee immorality. And that, that's sexual temptation and those types of immoral situations where don't sit and think that you've got it together enough to just resist and the devil will go, you need to get out of there. You need to flee that situation. And then the last one is, is greed. If there's greed, we need to be out of there. And that, of course, is because all kinds of evil come from materialism. And when we're greedy, when we're being materialistic, there's so much that can come from that. So I thought it was interesting that there were three specific things that don't just resist, flee and get out of there. And Mm -hmm. I think the best, one of the best examples of that in scripture is Joseph with Potiphar's wife, when she was trying to yeah. get him to have a relationship right. with her. And he finally, she grabbed on his coat and he just left and he left the coat. And then of course, that's how she accused him. Look at, he left his coat, right. but he didn't care. He was doing what was right in God's eyes, not in man's eyes. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Well, I think the one thing we can all agree on is you will not re- regret resisting sin, but you will regret giving in. Amen. And that's where temptation will. will grab you. Mm-hmm. But it's not just the giving in and the temptation that's 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 going to grab you. It's the guilt that's going to come with it. And that happens to everybody. They fall into the trap when they're tempted and they fall. And then it's the guilt and they can't forgive themselves. 
God forgives them when they ask him to, but they can't forgive themselves. And then it becomes, it's almost like when you tell a lie, but you tell a lie to cover a lie and then a lie to cover a lie to cover a lie to cover a lie, you know, I'm saying mm-hmm. it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Until, yeah. You know, it, it just gets eventually going to explode. And, and that's, mm-hmm. that's, and that's what's going to happen inside you and inside your heart. But the, so the result of, of falling into that temptation, of course, is sin. And, um, we're dragged down a destructive path and it's, um, the feeling, it's feeling of having done wrong and then not letting it go. But there is something over in James uh, 4, 17, there is a way that he told, he told us, so he goes, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. Mm-hmm. So that's where our forgiveness comes in. And then we have to let it go too. Mm-hmm. We got to let go of that guilt because it's gone. He's washed it away. If you ask God about it, hey, what about that sin? See, what's in? It's been forgiven. But yet we hold on to it ourselves and we cause more turmoil and, and we've caused ourselves to sin again because of it because and to yield to temptation hmm. um, or not yield to temptation. <laughs> and you'd, you'd hope that we would learn from experience because, you know, I remember as a kid one time, uh, a friend, a couple of friends of mine and I, I, I don't know why I followed along with the crowd, but he, we stole a pack of his mom's cigarettes and went mm. out in the woods and, and smoked them. And I was so afraid of it. And I, I didn't really inhale, but oh my goodness, the guilt that night I went home and I think I used a whole tube of toothpaste. I was sure <laughs> my mom would smell it. I was afraid my teeth had turned yellow. Cause I yeah, was heard smoking funny. did that. <laughs> it, it just, and then that night a cigarette came, commercial come, came on and my mom was like, who would ever smoke? I mean, it kills you. And oh, the guilt, <laughs> you know, but then, you know, it's that wearing down of the conscience after, after a while, if you're not careful, your guilt is is not as strong, and you're you're moving away from the Lord more and more. Right? Yeah, right. I think that's true with the TV programs we watch. Mm-hmm. You know, you think about the years ago, the the clean and wholesome programs without the bad language, without the su- suggestive things, and over the course of time, I think we've allowed ourselves. I know I have allowed myself to be more accepting of mm-hmm. what I watch or what I listen to that uh, is part of that slippery slope. Mm-hmm. Well, we know guilt is destructive. Look what it did to Judas when he realized what he had done, yeah. that he had sold the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Crazy. And he, and he just, he wanted to take it back. And the Sanhedrin, they just said, forget you, it's done. Yeah. And then he went out and hung himself. I mean... You know, the guilt can eat you alive and eventually kill you. And uh, we we read in, in Romans 2.15, since they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bear witness and their thoughts now accusing, now even defending them. And that's where your thoughts and your con- that conscience is there for a reason. And when you realize that you've really sinned against God, how much you've hurt him, that should hurt us deeply. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so true. And then and then that moves on to leading a life of regret and a feeling of worthlessness. And uh, I just can't imagine, you just hope that at the end of your days, as you're laying on that bed <laughs> with your family mm-hmm. around you, that you do not have regrets, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's something does. that we can deal with now. Mm-hmm. And uh, like Judah, you talked about Judas and, and then there's Peter. Look at what mm. Peter did when he denied Christ three times and the regret that he had there. And he just ran out weeping. And I was even thinking about, I was thinking about examples and even Jonah, when he, ran the wrong direction, tried to get as far away from God as he could, it finally hit him. He finally had the regrets when the circumstances, what he did was going to kill an entire crew Crew of a a ship. Mm -hmm. And so he came to his senses and he repented and he immediately, and that's what we have to do. We have to go to Jesus immediately. We have to confess. That's part of Satan's plan to try to keep us in that regretful, worthless feeling that that sin allows to happen. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think that the key is immediately in, in, in a little bit near the end, we're going to talk about David. He was a great example. But Brian, for those that are just overcome with regret and guilt and they're listening to this, they can be free from that. They can be. You can have freedom from guilt. And the Bible tells us this over in First John 1, 9, where it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I mean, it's right there. All we have to do is confess to him our sins. And it's not just saying, okay, uh, God, I did this and uh, forgive me and then walking away. I mean, it's, it's, there's no sincerity there. It's really truly asking him to, to forgive you of your sins, but yeah. also accepting him into your life and asking him to be a part of your life. Because when you accept Christ, he comes into your life. We always say he comes into my heart. Well, what's the heart? The heart is, is you. It's like your soul. It's, 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 uh, and I'm not needing a beating heart, but you're accepting Christ. And so you are representing him at that point. And who wants to sin? And, and you know, you really want to try to avoid that. There's people talk about the fear of God. And I always say it's, it's not be fearful of God. I always say I'm fearful that I'm, go I'm going to disappoint God. You want to step out and do the right thing and not do the wrong thing. Hmm. But it, we also know that we have to look forward and not turn back. And over, over in, in Philippians uh, 3, 13 and 14, it says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me uh, heavenward in Christ Jesus. And you know, what is that prize? The prize is when we get to heaven and we're standing before Jesus and he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That, right. is, that is the prize. That's what we're looking for. That's yes. the goal. We can't so, live our life in the rear view mirror. We have to put those right. regrets behind us because Christ came to make us new. Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, yep. if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You can have a new start today. Yeah. Repent of your sins. Ask Christ to forgive you. He will. He died for you. He wants you to move forward. We can't live our lives mm -hmm. in the rear view mirror. And Terry, right. David was such a great example. I used to wonder how God could call David a man after his own heart, after what he did. I mean, here he, his, his first mistake was dwelling on Bathsheba. Looking yeah. at her, keeping his eyes on her. He should have bounced his eyes, as we say. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, it's uh, it, and, and it only gets worse. I mean, he mm -hmm. did. You think about a, a man's struggle frequently is because we're attracted to the image of a woman. So we are always fighting that uh, attractiveness and the lust and the things that go with that. And he allowed it, and and for him, apparently there was pride in there. There was he was digging a deep hole. That next thing you know, there's murder. Well, I you mean, know, he was the king. He was in that power and maybe feeling like he could get away with it. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so the neat thing is, is that he maintained a heart after God, and right. it's mm -hmm. evident in the fifty-first chapter of Psalm where we're reading about the prayer that David prayed to God after he realized, after Nathan came and David immediately showed humility and repentance and was on the right path to recovery. And listen to what it says, because first of all, you have to accept responsibility. It's mm -hmm. so easy to blame other people. It's so easy to make excuses. But listen to this, because seven times... In the first four verses, David says, my or I, mm. and I won't read it all, but in the, mm -hmm. uh, he says, I blot, he said, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my nice. iniquity, mm -hmm. cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And against you, you only have I sin. So first you have to take responsibility for right. it. Then you acknowledge it. And that's mm -hmm. what he did in the third verse. I acknowledge my transgressions and my sins before you. And so mm -hmm. those are the first two things that he did that I think so critical. Accept responsibility, 
right. and acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on uh, to confess, he confesses to God, and what you started to read there in 51 uh, verse 4, against you only you have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. So he was going to accept what, what Christ was or what God was going to do because as a punishment, because he knew that he had sinned. He knew that he had sinned against God. And, and it, was, it, was, it wasn't an outer sin. It was an inner. It was immoral. And mm -hmm. so he knew that, that he, he, des he knew he would deserve to be punished for that. But he also knew that God removes the sin. And over, um, well, even you just said it over in verse two, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He'd ask forgiveness. But then in Psalm 51, nine, it said, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Asking God just to blot it away, take it away which is what Jesus does when he, uh, to, for us when we ask for him to forgive us of our sin. He died on the cross for that so he can blot away the sins that we've committed. He takes it on for us. Yeah. And then he asks God to restore his joy, the joy of his salvation. In verse yeah. 8, let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. And over in verse 12, restore to me the joy. Mm -hmm. of my salvation. Wow. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So we see he accepted mm -hmm. responsibility, acknowledged his sinfulness, confessed, removed the sin, restored the joy, and then he wants to renew his fellowship with God. He, he begs God in verse 11, do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Guys, I've been there mm -hmm. where I had sinned and I was in so much guilt and so much turmoil, and I couldn't find God's presence. That's a horrible mm -hmm. place to be, and I'll never forget the day it broke. He broke through, and yeah. I felt him again. It was like, oh, thank you, Lord. And I, I never, ever will go back to that place. Yeah, yeah, that's neat. That's neat. And then he finishes it off. Well, actually, there's a little bit more, but he begins to focus on the future. He begins to put it behind him. And he asked the Lord, he said, uphold me with your generous spirit. Mm -hmm. So he's putting that behind him. He wants God's spirit to help and uphold him. Mm -hmm. And that's what we can have through God in our lives. So if there's anyone listening to this and it's ringing true that you've been tempted, you failed, you're walking in guilt, you haven't sensed God's presence, Today may be the time mm -hmm. right now may be the time for you to just turn that over to him and allow him to uphold you with his spirit. Yeah. And uh, maybe we should just take a minute to pray right now for anyone. Father, if there's anyone listening now that is in that situation of being away from you, being tempted, failing, feeling guilty, not forgiving themselves, not being able to come back to you, God. We just ask you to reveal yourself to them right now through your spirit. May they sense your presence. Maybe they haven't sensed it in a long time. Lord, give them that courage and that strength to ask you for forgiveness right now. Yes. Ask them, or, or Lord, have them. Be able to stand strong through your spirit to fight the devil with the mm -hmm. temptations, God. But Hallelujah. remove the guilt. Yes. Remove the guilt right now, God. Allow them to draw close to you, Lord, and begin to look ahead. Begin to look ahead with the power of your spirit. And we'll thank you for it in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Terry. If you're listening and you just feel like you have blown it, run to Jesus. Run to him. Yeah. He's waiting with open arms. Satan wants you to wallow in your guilt and your shame, and he wants you to think your life is over and you can't do anything for him the rest of your life. He wants that. Yeah. But Jesus says, no, I, I, I've forgiven you, and, yeah. and I, I have a plan for you, and we're, we're still going to win this thing together, and you yeah. can end your life. As 
as we were talking earlier, when you're laying there in bed on your final, you know, your final breaths in life, you don't want to have those regrets. You want to see Jesus waiting with open arms. Beth saw it. She saw heaven. She knew where she was going. But guys, I think, you know, when we talk about finishing strong at our age, our whole concept to form this ministry was we've still got some good years left. We (laughs) still have a lot we can do for the Lord. But you know what? Satan's going to try and, and battle us. At, mm-hmm. We're not free from it at our age. No, we got to right. resist temptation, submit to God, flee from the devil, run to Jesus. Right. And, you know, I just ran across this 13th verse. I read one more verse past, and this is what David did, and this is what we're doing right now is it says, then, this is David saying, after all these things, he says, then I will teach God transgressors your ways and Hmm. sinners shall be converted to you. There's good that can come out of this. Dan, you were talking about the state you were in back then. And now look what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. You're fulfilling that verse 13. And And God can do that with anybody. So thankful for it. I never thought I could be where I am, but uh, God makes all things new. He yep. restores us. I'm so thankful. You know, that's one thing we we never can stop being is grateful for what Christ did for us yep. and what he wants to do in your life. Um, so another great addition, guys. Any final yeah. thoughts as we wrap things up? Yeah, don't don't you or don't fall into temptation. <laughs> Stay away. Run. Run from yeah. it. Just it just will, like Joseph yeah. said. Run. Leave your coat. Yeah. Just go. It will ruin your life. But move forward with the Lord. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. We love you. We love the Lord. We want to help you uh, reach out to us. Go to our Facebook page. We have one called uh, Fearless Faith, and our logo is Three Flames. You can go there and write us and inbox us. We'd love to pray for you. Uh, Thanks for joining us. Uh, We'll see you next time for another edition of Finish Strong. Thank you for listening to Finish Strong. For more information about Finish Strong and Fearless Faith, check out their website, ffaith.org. Make sure that you rate and review this podcast to help more people accomplish their God-given purpose so that together we can finish strong.